If you look at the history of England and France from 1066, when William the Conqueror conquers England, it's kind of like France conquering England. When that happens, from that point on, for the next five centuries, basically, France and England fight each other all the time. And England is regularly trying to conquer whole swaths of France, and eventually it actually does. In the aftermath of the Battle of Agincourt in 1415, basically Henry V does take over France briefly. So in other words, England's mind was always towards conquering France. But because the French had done it first with William the Conqueror, the official language of England was French until Henry VII at the end of the 15th century flips it. In the end, some reason, the English go, you know what, we're done with France. Well, they'll still keep fighting France, but not in France. The, the scale of England's thinking shifts and instead of it being this knockdown, drag out fight in Europe between the English and the French, the English basically surrender their, their claims to France. Not a, they don't do it officially until Queen Victoria. And they turn their eye to the rest of the world, which is what gets them into the colonies. So you all were taught, because I was taught the same thing, that the Industrial Revolution started in the 18th century, basically in England. That's not true. The Industrial Revolution started somewhere between 750 and 800 in the Arab world. What happened in the 18th century is the English began using steam power. And then they realized, well, we can put steam power in factories and we can automate factories. So when we talk about the Industrial Revolution, what we really mean is the steam powered phase of the Industrial Revolution that the English did innovate. That really is their thing. But, but by that point, we'd already had nine centuries of slow industrialization rolling across the planet. The British will just w get win after win after win. They'll grab Egypt, they grab Southern Africa, right? And they put together this really crazy empire that stretches into Asia. They have Malaysia and Singapore. They have Hong Kong. And then, of course, they still have Canada. They make a foray into South America. They're defeated. But they, they grab a piece of Central America, Belize. And so this empire sprawls across the planet. They run into a problem. And the problem is that they realize something amazing is coming. There's a new resource on the, on the table. And that new resource is discovered, it's sort of rediscovered in 1861 in Oil Creek, Pennsylvania. Oil Creek was named Oil Creek because there was oil floating on the surface of the creek. And they got a group of investors together and they dug the well. And in 1861, they hit oil and they realized you could sell it for people and they could light their houses using oil lamps from oil dug from the ground instead of using sperm whales for that purpose or using kerosene. The way we were making kerosene is we would bake trees and as you bake them, we would basically have containers underneath the tree and it would catch the kerosene. And so you're, you're basically murdering whole forests, turning them into kerosene and coal in the process. And so all of a sudden, oil becomes a thing that we're using. You can also use it for heating purposes. And then it occurs to somebody, you could use it as a fuel source to replace steam and a guy named Daimler invents the internal combustion engine. He puts it on a motorcycle first. He puts it on a car next. And the English go into panic mode shortly afterwards. And here's why the English go into panic mode. They realize that oil is going to replace coal and they don't have an oil company. They did have an oil company. It was called Shell. The Dutch purchase it. So it becomes Royal Dutch Shell. The English own 49% but the Dutch have the controlling 51%. The English and the Dutch have a great relationship. And then the other oil company on the planet was Standard Oil. And that was John D. Rockefeller's company. And it's also a huge company because the original Saudi Arabia for planet Earth was Ohio, Indiana, and Pennsylvania. That's where Standard Oil had made its home and it was making crazy money. And the British had a great relationship with us. The problem is the British didn't build an empire by having great relationships with people with resources. The British built an empire by going and getting the resources directly and basically plundering other countries for those resources. 
So they decide they have to find oil. The way you found oil, so that they have their own oil company. The way you found oil at the time is as you were walking, you looked at the ground. If you got super lucky, you'd step right in it. There was enough oil on the planet that there was actually places where it had seeped to the surface. Shale and sandstone are really porous, and if, they're, if it's sitting on top of an oil field, it'll suck the oil into it and it'll turn black, indicating you just gotta get through that and you can get to the oil. The planet's too big to have a bunch of people walking around looking at their feet all day. So the English decided to take a different approach they decided to read history books to see who used to have oil in the past because odds are wherever it was in the past, it's still there. And here's what they found. They found that sometime between 750 and 800 AD, the same time that the Arabs are inventing industry, they began lighting their streets up at night using oil that they piped through their cities into lamps. And so the English go, oh my God, if they were doing that then, they must have oil there still. So they begin looking in the Middle East. They carve Kuwait out of the Ottoman Empire with the hope that they'll find oil in the area. They find it across the Persian Gulf, also known as the Arabian Gulf, in Khuzestan, which is the southwest corner of Iran. They strike an amazing deal with the rulers of Iran where they'll get 84% concession. Normally, if you're a foreign business extracting a resource from a country, it's a 50-50 split because, right, it's the country's resource, but you did the work. So you get 50%, they get 50%. The British got an 84% concession and they were giving the Persians just 16% for their oil. And that company was called the Anglo Persian oil company, it got renamed, it became the Anglo-Iranian oil company, and then it got nationalized and the Iranians called the new company the National Iranian Oil Company, it still exists. The British then took the remainder of the company, which wasn't entirely in Iran, and they called that piece British Petroleum, that's the birth of BP. It turned out there was oil off the coast of Scotland, so BP could just exploit Scottish oil. And, that, and that, that became the way the British got their oil supply. So the British Empire then is the world's dominant superpower. It's found oil in Iran, it's calmed itself down, but it's run into another problem. And the other problem is Germany. 